Hey guys, it's Poe back at Hey guys, it's Poe back again with 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 Let's Get Tacky. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I almost feel like I should be welcoming myself back to the channel. Uh, so as you could tell by the intro, uh, the baby has come. Rowan is here. I could not be happier, but I could also not be any more tired. Um, it's great. It's awesome. I'm ecstatic. I'm so happy. He's healthy. Uh, my wife's doing great. Um, so a very, very happy time in my life, but also a very busy time and a very tired time. Uh, so hopefully we'll start to get back into the swing of things uh, and start pumping out some content again. Uh, today we're going to jump right into things. As you can see on the table, uh, I've got a Core i9-7900X and DeBauer's new Delid tool, uh, the Dimate X. Uh, so we're going to be popping the top on this i9, using a little bit of liquid metal on it. Um, I actually just got this i9 a couple days ago. Um, right about, gosh, it's probably been a month now. Uh, a month ago was when I was going to upload the video of the hardline build that I had been teasing on the channel and on social media. Uh, unfortunately, we had some issues with that build. Nothing major, uh, but it caused me to completely change course. I completely tore that system down, uh, sold off just about everything and I'm going in a completely different direction with the build now. I've got all of my parts together, save uh, some cables and a hard drive that I'm waiting on, uh, but that new hardline build will be coming soon. Uh, in that build video, I also will share with you um, what we had go wrong with the first build. Um, it still turned out fantastic, still performed awesome. Uh, I just was not happy with it and there was one slight hiccup with it. Uh, but again, I'll share that with you uh, when the time comes. Uh, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and pop the top on this and put some liquid metal on. Uh, so we'll start out with the Allen key. That's exactly what it is, an Allen key. And this is what we will use to tighten up the tool to push the IHS off of the CPU. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the body out of the box. And already you can tell that this is a much more advanced solution than his previous tools. Um, so previously you would have, instead of this Allen screw being here, it would be sticking out the end here, you would tighten it down, it would push this way, and this portion of it that will touch the IHS would literally just push the IHS off the top of the substrate. Uh, the reason that would not work for Skylake X is because Intel did a much better job of attaching the IHS, there's more adhesive holding the IHS on. Uh, so that method of just pushing it straight off would not work. Uh, so DeBauer went and changed the design to make it a lever style. So now when you tighten this screw, it pushes this lever in that direction, pushing this mechanism back this way, and pushing the IHS off of the CPU. This portion of it that I'm unscrewing now is actually the relid tool. So this is what you use to put pressure back down on the IHS when you're re-gluing it on. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take that off as we're not going to need it for a little bit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and back the Allen screw out as far as we can and give us enough room to get the CPU set in the tool. Uh, so you'll notice here there is a triangle in the tool similar to the previous tools. And as always, you've got a triangle on the CPU itself. Uh, so that is on this corner. We're going to line that up with the triangle in the tool and pop it in just like that. Uh, now you can start to get an idea when this comes over, it is going to 
come in contact with the IHS uh, and push it that way. <clears throat> now we're not looking to push this IHS completely off. Now the reason being is because there's a lot of small componentry underneath this IHS uh, that is visible and is in danger of being ripped off by this IHS if you push it too far this way. Uh, so a good marking to figure out how far you've pushed it, there's a little chip up here in the corner that is an RFID chip. It's not active on these CPUs, it is on the Xeon CPUs. Uh, which this shares the same package, uh, but you can use that uh, in relation to the IHS to see how far you've pushed it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and tighten up this Allen key uh, and then we'll start pushing. Alright, so we've got it snug down. Uh, I've turned it as much or almost as much as I can by hand. Uh, so it's snug up against the CPU. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start pushing it with the Allen key now. Uh, forgive me, but I'm not going to give you any commentary as I'm doing it uh, because to be quite honest with you, I do not want to destroy this thousand dollar CPU. So I can hear it starting to break free. <clears throat> it is an incredibly scary noise. I can tell that I've pushed it probably, <clears throat> I would say, at least a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and back the pressure back off uh, and see if it's loose enough for me to go ahead and pull it apart by hand. Again, you don't want to continue to push it. If you do push it too far, uh, you are going to damage the CPU. And that's definitely not what you want to do. Um, this being a thousand dollar chip, um, in my eyes that's kind of irrelevant. I would not want to damage it even if it was the, uh, the lower end chip. Alright, so I've got it loose enough. I'm going to go ahead and loosen it some more by hand. Push this lever back so that I can go ahead and free up the CPU itself. <clears throat> so I can tell by looking at it that it has pushed it some. Uh, obviously I knew that I had pushed it but uh, I can definitely tell. I'm going to try to put it in front of the camera here and see if I can show you. I'm going to go ahead and try to pull this thing apart by hand. Uh, so that I don't wreck this thousand dollar CPU. Again, you do want to be careful even when you're doing this. Uh, the substrate is not as thick as they used to be. Uh, so you can literally just break these things in half with too much force. Okay, so it is going to take a little bit more pushing, unfortunately. I'm not super excited about that, but uh, we'll go ahead and put it back in the tool and give it a little bit more. Okay, I can definitely tell that is enough now. If I can't get it off by hand now, I'm just going to go to bed. So it's back out of the tool after the second round of pushing uh, and I am confident well I wouldn't say that I'm confident it's ready to come off but I am confident that I'm done pushing so we're gonna go ahead again oh yeah oh yeah here she comes bingo everybody hold your breath while I check and see if we've destroyed anything I destroyed it. There are literally like no capacitors left on it. Uh, ripped off probably eight or nine SMDs. Um, it's done. It's done. So there goes a thousand dollars down the drain. 
Nah, nah, I'm just kidding. It came out fine. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up uh, and get it ready to apply some liquid metal. Uh, we're also going to use <clears throat> some fingernail polish. So I picked this stuff. This is actually just something that my mother-in-law had laying around. Um, it's perfect for this application. Uh, it does not use some of the harsh chemicals that some of them have. Uh, what you want to stay away from when you're looking for nail polish to put over these SMDs, uh, the main thing is it's a, it's a chemical called toluene. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's T-O-L-U-E-N-E. -E. This does not have any of that. Uh, and basically just what you need to do is pick the stuff that you want to use, uh, do a quick Google search, and you should be able to find out uh, what that product is made of. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. Uh, we'll apply some of that fingernail polish. All right, so I've gotten the IHS as well as the package substrate itself clean. Uh, pulled off as much of the silicone adhesive as I could as well. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use the nail polish uh, to cover up any of these sensitive components that are around the dye itself. I've gotten all of the SMDs covered with the nail polish. Uh, it didn't take long at all to dry. Uh, I think it turned out very well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and apply our liquid metal. Alright, I've got the liquid metal applied to the dye. Uh, it's ready to go ahead and reattach the IHS. I'll be using some Permatex uh, Red RTV uh, to reattach it. Uh, this is part number 81160. All right guys, so I got it back together without incident. Um, looks like it's ready to go. Unfortunately, I won't be able to test that until we get the build done, uh, which is coming. I've said that a lot now. Um, we've spanned, I believe, almost two months now. Um, obviously, Rowan coming um, put a little bit of a delay in that, but I'm perfectly fine with that. If that's the reason for delay, I'll take that reason and that delay all day long. Um, I do want to apologize if you guys are picking up any of the background noise. Uh, my wife has been binge watching Stranger Things uh, for this entire weekend. I can't lie, I've actually been watching it with her too, but I snuck away um, to finish recording this video so I could get it uploaded. Uh, but it turned out well. Um, it looks identical to how it did before delitting, uh, apart from the fact that I used red RTV to seal it. Uh, and whatever sealant that Intel uses uh, is black. So, uh, But beyond that, it looks exactly the same. Hopefully it doesn't function the same. Hopefully it functions a whole lot cooler. Uh, but we will find that out here in the near future. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next one.